Hi there, I'm Kim Vanell, taking you through some of the things people are talking about and the stuff they're sharing around the world on Newsfeed today. Family politics take centre stage in India, where Priyanka Gandhi's entry into the election could change the race for the country's leader big time. Thousands of students skip class, but could their, their protest be teaching the rest of us a valuable lesson? Hot enough to melt tyres. Australia is under an extreme heat warning after temperatures soar into the mid-40s. And the world's top dog will have more competition this year as the Westminster show unveils its newest breeds. Across the political spectrum, everyone in India is talking about one thing right now, Priyanka Gandhi. That's because her entry to politics marks a new push by a powerful dynasty and a real challenge to current Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Priyanka has been named the new General Secretary of Congress for Uttar Pradesh, and already the internet is drawing parallels between the 47-year-old and her very famous grandmother. Yeah! <laughs> So given all of that, it's no surprise then who Priyanka is that the internet is lighting up with commentary on her appointment. From New Delhi, Nihal Punia has more. Priyanka Gandhi is someone who comes from political royalty in India. She's directly related to three former prime ministers and for years has stayed in the shadow of her brother Rahul Gandhi. But now she's taken that plunge into active politics. When that announcement was made, Priyanka enters politics. That hashtag was a top trend in India and many were quick to draw this comparison, comparing her to her grandmother, the former Prime Minister of India, Indira Gandhi, not just in their physical appearance but also in their personality. Uh, many Congress insiders have said that uh, she's quite charismatic and has a sharp political acumen, quite like Indira did herself. I Minha's mean, merchant, though, was quick to dismiss this announcement as nothing but nepotism, saying three Gandhis are clearly better than two. The pioneers of India's feudal dynastic politics clearly think so ahead of this very crucial election that will take place later this year. Shekhar Gupta, though, saying the story isn't that Priyanka is joining active politics. It is that she has chosen the one region most tough for the Congress, that's Uttar Pradesh, the state that sends the most number of members of parliament uh, in the next general election. And uh, here she will directly take on Prime Minister Modi. And this is certainly a huge risk for the Congress, especially for someone who has no political background or experience like Priyanka Gandhi does. Rana Ayub saying it's the optics of this particular announcement that's hugely fascinating. It will essentially be Prime Minister Modi who also contests uh, for elections from Uttar Pradesh and Priy uh, Priyanka Gandhi against him, who is now made in charge of that state as well. And uh, of course, this cartoon summing it up, many saying that Rahul Gandhi was first trying to rescue the Congress. This is uh, their uh, icon. And uh, now it shows Priyanka Gandhi not only trying to rescue the Congress party, but also her brother, Rahul Gandhi. Now, students in Brussels are cutting class, but they're hoping the pause on their studies will be a learning experience for the world.
They're out in the thousands for the third week in a row, demanding world leaders take a more serious approach to current and future policies on climate change. Here's a look at some of the messages they are sending. Now, Jack Parrick met with some of the students today who had this to say. It's been an organic uprising of the young people of Belgium. It started in schools in Flanders. They headed here three weeks ago to make their voices heard. And they're raising their voices loudly, as you can hear. They say they'll continue to come out every Thursday to protest climate change until the governments of Europe, the government here in Belgium, and around the world do something to prevent climate change. We can make a difference because it's uh, the, for the future. We are the future uh, human for this planet. We don't want to be there in 50 years and think from why, why did we do this and we didn't say, why, why didn't we speak up when we had the chance? Because right now we are here to make our future. And if we stay, stay at home and think other people will do it, it won't change. And what about the teachers, the parents of these students that have walked out? Well, many of them, in fact, have been very supportive of this action. And obviously, with thousands of students on the streets, it's difficult for schools to put them all in detention. The idea of this protest is to continue. They want the governments and the European Union institutions here in Brussels to do more to tackle climate change. And they're calling on governments around the world to do the same. All right, let's have a look now at some other things that caught our eye on social media. The heat wave in Australia is taking its toll. Outback rangers found nearly 100 dead and dying horses in a dried up waterhole near Alice Springs. And there are plans to cull more than 100 more starving animals to put them out of their misery. The heat wave has gone on for two weeks now with temperatures in Adelaide reaching 46.6 degrees. It started to melt tires as Mike Kudema tweeted, not even the humble thong or flip-flop or jandal could survive. First there's annual leave, then there's sick leave, and now for some women in China, there's dating leave. Female employees at two major Chinese companies are being given eight days holiday to go home and date. They must be over 30 and be in non-frontline roles. China is facing a demographic crisis with more than 200 million single adults. The marriage rate continuing to fall and deaths now outstripping births for the first time since records began. Employees at the tourism firm in Hangzhou are said to be welcoming the move. Amazon is ushering in the autonomous age with the rollout of its totally self-sufficient, fully electric delivery system called Amazon Scout. Devices are for now only rolling around Snohomish County in Washington and initially will have a human sidekick to make sure they can navigate pets and pedestrians. Scout Trapes is the sidewalk going at walking pace, dropping deliveries as it goes. Another nail in the coffin for the high street or the ultimate inconvenience. You be the judge. Social media is buzzing over Kamala Harris's announcement she's competing to be the Democratic nominee to run for US president. Harris has been a district attorney and an attorney general before becoming a senator in 2016. She'd also be the first African-American or Asian-American woman to become a major party nominee. Take a look. The crisis we're facing is a crisis of leadership. That's the crisis. the American people hostage over a vanity project that he calls a wall, while 800,000 people are trying to figure out how they're going to pay their rent, how they're going to pay their mortgage. It is completely irresponsible.
concern is that we cannot conduct our foreign policy through tweets. So as much as anything, I'm concerned with the process by which the president went about doing um, what he has done in Syria. Let's go around the world now for some other stories you need to know this Thursday. A nurse has been arrested in the US after a woman who is unable to speak and who's been in care since the age of three gave birth to a healthy baby boy. It was first reported the 29-year-old woman was in a coma, but a lawyer representing the woman's family says she is conscious and rather has a significant intellectual disability and is non-verbal. The 36-year-old man who's been arrested is facing one charge of sexual assault and one of vulnerable adult abuse. Most transgender people in the US have once again been barred from serving in the military. The ban had been lifted back in 2016 under then-President Barack Obama. But President Trump says American forces cannot afford the tremendous medical costs and disruption of transgender service members. The Supreme Court has ruled in his favour, saying the ban will be in place until the case makes its way promptly through the lower courts. Rapper Jay-Z has put his name to a $50 million justice reform program in a bid to help young Americans caught up in a cycle of minor parole violations. The program, called the Reform Alliance, hopes to cut the number of people held back by illogical parole and probation laws. The founders, which include rapper Meek Mill and New England Patriots owner Robert Kraft, say the current system is designed to keep people in prison rather than focus on rehabilitation. The BBC has found itself in hot water after airing a show claiming to feature a Syrian refugee who'd made her way across the border to Turkey before being forced to turn to prostitution. Turns out that may not be the case. Take a look. Finally, in today's Animals Doing Stuff, we have two new breeds of doggo with extremely difficult to pronounce names who have made it to the premier dog event, the Westminster Kennel Club Show Day. Introducing the Grand Basset Griffin Van Dayen and the Nadalance Koikerhandje. The latter of the two was initially bred to help Dutch duck hunters lure birds into net covered canals. That's how it came to be known as the Pied Piper of the dog world, which is much easier to say. They'll join the 190 other breeds on show next month. This year, the show has come back at animal rights groups who say dog breeding is wrong given there are so many mixed dog breeds that need homes. Well, that's it from the Newsfeed team. You'll find us 24 seven on Twitter and YouTube. And of course, you can follow me on Instagram, follow, subscribe, add. We'll see you tomorrow.